In this video you will learn what is Monorepo and how you can set up it by using a Nix project. So the first question is what is Monorepo? And this is something which is mostly interesting for big applications or companies where you have lots of different projects and you somehow need to build the whole ecosystem around them. As you can see here, I opened the website monorepo.tools and here you have a really nice explanations what is monorepo and what is not. As you can see here, we have monorepo and polyrepo. And these are two popular ways how we are working in the companies. First of all, let's talk about polyrepo. The idea is that you have different repositories for different projects. For example, you have project 1, project 2, project 3. Then you need some libraries which are shared between these projects. For every single library you are creating additional repo, you can release stuff in that repo, it has its own versioning, and then all of the repos can use it. This is exactly what you can see on this image. Monorepo is different. You have also here your company, but then inside the same repository you have all your applications, all your libraries, and they can work together. And actually there are pros and cons in both these variants. It is not like one of these variants is superior. The really important line to remember that monolith and monorepo are two different things. Monolith means that you are just throwing everything that you have, all your projects, libraries, whatever files you have, in a single repository and you don't structure it at all. Then it becomes unsupportable and we don't want that. Monorepo is something different, you have a strict structure and strict rules how all your projects are working together. And the main question is here, why do we need monorepo and not polyrepo? The main idea with polyrepo is that you have different versioning in different places and you can make releases at any moment. Which is actually totally fine, because everything is versioned separately, but the amount of changes and the amount of releases that you typically need to do is quite huge. Inside monorepo you have just a single repository and you have just a single release for everything. And obviously you can understand it has its pros and cons. It is easier to make fast changes, but nothing is isolated. Which brings us to Enix. Enix is one of the most popular solutions to create monorepo. And this is exactly what we will use in this tutorial to create it in a matter of minutes. So what Enix does for us, it organizes the whole folder, the whole repository, with all our projects and all our libraries. Additionally to that, we will get out of the box all commands that we need to start our applications, build our libraries, build our projects, running linting tools, testing tools and much much more. So let's try it out. First of all, we want to generate a new project and for this we are writing npx, create Enix workspace, at latest. I am hitting here enter and we will get some questions. First of all, I don't have this package, this is why it must be installed. Secondly, we are getting some questions. What do we want to create? Package based monorepo, integrated monorepo and standalone applications. The easiest to start, because you are getting everything configured, is integrated monorepo. This is exactly what we are selecting here. Now what to create in new workspace? Let's create an Angular application inside. And let's name our repository full company, because this is the whole repository for the whole company. And our first application inside, which is an Angular application, let's name it shop. Here we are also getting a question, do we want to use standalone components or not inside our Angular application. We can select here yes, add routing, CSS, and now we don't want to create distributed caching. As you can see, everything is installed successfully and let's look on our project. So this is the project that we are getting. We have here apps, libs and also tools and some configuration files. We are interested here to look in our apps, because here we have our shop and tests for our shop, which actually means our Angular application that we generated is living now inside apps, shop and here is our application. We have here source, app and this is just a normal Angular application. Now let's try to start it. For this we must write npx, nx, and nx is exactly the command line for nx commands. And here we are calling run, then the name of our application, in our case it is shop, then column and serve. 
and it is always run, then the name of the application and then serve. And this will start for us an Angular project. And it doesn't really matter if you have an Angular project, a React project or Node project, you will always start it in the same way with the Nix commands. As you can see in browser, my project is successfully started, here am I in localhost 4200, and here is an Angular project, which we created with an X, which essentially means now we can create any amount of projects that we want, and they all will be lined here inside apps, and then the name of the project. What I want to do now, I want to generate one more project, but I want to generate a React project. But here is important point to remember, if you are working in a company, you want to use just a single framework there. Obviously it is not always possible, but it is really difficult to share your components between React and Angular for example. And if you have just a single framework and you are sharing libraries between different projects which are leveraging the same framework, then it becomes much easier for you to make updates or implement new components. With that being said, let's create React application, because sometimes you have different use cases and your other team might want to use React and not Angular, for example. In order to generate an application, I am writing here npx, nx, generate, and here we have add nrwl slash react colon application. If we want to generate Angular application, we would write here Angular application. But in our case here, I want React, and the name admin is totally fine. And as you can see here, I have an attribute minus minus ts. This is an attribute for a nix to tell that we want to generate TypeScript React project, not JavaScript. In this case, by default, it would generate JavaScript project, but as we already have an Angular project, it makes a lot of sense to use TypeScript. In this case, we can create a TypeScript library and share TypeScript utilities, for example, between these two projects. I'm hitting here enter and we're getting an error. Enable to resolve React application. Why it happens? Because actually for this, we must install an additional package. So npm install at nrwl slash react. Let's try to generate project once again. Now we don't get an error, but we get some questions. What style sheet format we want to use? We can get out of the box styled components for example, but I will just select here CSS. Would you like to add React router? Obviously yes. And what bundler do you want to use? I want to use Vite. As you can see, our project was generated. Let's check this out. Now inside Foo Company, we have inside apps, not only our shop, but also admin project. And here inside source, you can see typical React project. Let's start this application with npx nx run. And here will be not shop serve, but admin serve. As you can see in browser, our React application is successfully started. So this is totally fine, we successfully generated two projects and two different teams can implement these projects. But what will we do if these teams want to share something? And this is why we have libraries inside NX. And in order to generate a library, we can write npx nx generate, here will be nrwl slash, and I want to write here js lib, and let's name it utilities. As you can see here, we are getting a bunch of questions. First of all, what test runner we want to use? I will select none. And secondly, what bundler do we prefer? I will select here TypeScript because I want TypeScript files to make a shareable TypeScript library. As you can see here, our library was created. Let's check this out. And inside our full company, not inside apps, but inside libs, we are getting new library, which is utils. And this is our shareable library with just TypeScript to share it between applications, which means there is no executable for the project. This is a library and it is just being used in different projects. As you can see here inside source, we have index.ts and here we have an export from lib utilities. And actually this is totally fine, what I want to do, I want to create here just a single function for testing, so you can see how we can use library between two different projects. This is why here I want to define a range function from start to the end, and here I want to return a spreaded array from end minus start, where I'm taking keys and I'm mapping through every single property to add to it our start point. And as you can see, we're getting here warnings from the TypeScript, so we must say that start is a number and end is also a number. And back we will get an array of numbers. 
So we successfully created our first function that we want to share. Now we can jump inside our projects, inside app, shop, here source, app. We have here, for example, app component. What I want to do here, I want to create on init function. This is why implements on init and here ng on init function, and I want to just console log here our range function. So in order to import correctly range function, we must write here import range from, and here we're getting add, and as you can see, we're getting lots of stuff which is related to our foo company. I'm typing here foo and we're getting foo company utilities. This is exactly the library from our foo company that we can import here and use. And what is even better, I can just jump inside this range function and it is working out of the box. Now here inside this console log, I want to just write range and call it from start to the end, for example, 40, 45. Now I want to jump to our React project. This is where here apps, admin, source, app, and here we have app TSX. And now here on the top, I want first of all to import our range function and secondly, just console log here a range function from 40 to 45. As you can see in browser here, I opened an Angular application and inside console, we can see the usage of our range function. And exactly the same with our React application, inside console, we see our range function result. So this is exactly how we can create library and share it between two different projects inside our monorepo. So Enix is a complicated but an extremely versatile tool which is suitable for a lot of projects inside your company. And actually, if you're interested to know what is Angular Signals and why it will change Angular forever, make sure to check this video also.